everybody, it's Jim T. Graham with RC Groups, and today we're looking at the Futech FY41AP. It's a return to home system with integrated on screen display, and it does a lot of other cool things. What I thought we would do is just lay this out and look at some of the components, how they work together, just to give you an idea and the ability to wrap your head around the whole concept. The brains of the operation is right in the middle. And this receives information from all the devices you see surrounding it. So uh, let's take a look at that. You have inputs on both sides. They're labeled well. You have a power manager. This is going to go to your ESC and battery. You have a GPS unit. This will allow you to talk to satellites. You have a USB plug that allow you to change the setup and update your firmware. And then we also have a main connector that will connect to the unit. And we have diagrams in the review that you can look at for that. We have a speed meter. This is going to uh, take air in to tell the unit how fast you're going. It's very accurate. And then these two cables are going to go out to video in, video out of your camera. And then, I don't know if this is clearly stated, this is an extension cable for your GPS. So if you're mounting that GPS back on the tail, you're going to use that to uh, get it farther away from your video transmitter. So let's take a closer look at how everything plugs into the unit. In the lower left-hand corner, your speed tube will connect using just a standard servo type plug. And in the upper right hand, your power management cables will plug in there. The way the plug is made, there's no way to plug that in wrong, which is nice. Also, when you plug this in, I thought that I had loose, a loose fit. And really what I found out was you just needed to apply more pressure to get it really plugged in, which is great because you know none of these things are going to fall out. Just something to be aware of. Then this is your next loom of wires. They're going to plug in in the lower portion of this plug. And everything's noted and printed on the side with a negative. So you can uh, be sure to get your wires plugged in the right way. We have one more wire loom that plugs in above that. And that would be your GPS. And once again, we're noting the negativity. So now that's in. And then we have these plugs. The USB cable, well, let's start here. Uh, your video in and video out are going to plug in next to the power management. And those are powered. So um, you want to make sure if you're plugging that into something that the voltage is correct. Uh, I went ahead and cut the lead off of mine and powered it separately. Also, this is for your USB. So the top allows setup of the uh, return to home system. The bottom plugs, this, you just move it down. That would allow you to change your on-screen display. These are all for your servo inputs. And I have a diagram in my review for you to look at to know what goes where. So that's a brief overview of everything here. Once again, the manual is great and it's also in my review. So here's the unit in the Finwing Penguin. I tried it without the isolation mount and with. I liked it with. And, uh, you know, I tried to tidy up my wires a little bit. There are a lot of wires in there, but the installation was pretty simple. I used the manual with the information I just gave before and everything was going the right direction, working well. I've got the receiver on one side of the fuse and then you'll see the power manager is on the other side. That's because it's near the battery and the ESC. And then the front of the fuse is, is clean and that's just for the battery or batteries if I add batteries in the future. And then finally, there's the airspeed meter and I thought about putting it on the side and some other places and ultimately I put it in the nose because I figured that's where the cleanest air is. When it's in the nose you have to be careful but I've knocked it out of there twice. I use uh, hot glue to hold it in so that's a nice way to not harm the tube but get it to stay. You'll see that I have a pan and tilt camera on top. Then I have an RC Logger Pro take, for taking high def video and this is my setup. 
And now we'll go in and we'll just look at uh, how, to, after you get everything in there, you're going to have to uh, change some parameters. So let's look at that. So in the link that corresponds with this video, you'll find my full review that goes over all of this pretty extensively. And the instruction manual also goes over this really well. So I'm, not, I'm just going to lightly touch on this. If everything's plugged in to your main unit correctly, and going out to your receiver, then you should be able to test it and make sure your ailerons and elevator and rudder and everything's moving the right direction. The other thing you want to verify is that your gyro is moving everything in the correct direction. So on the RC Groups review, there are images to show you how to do this. What you're looking at now is a screen that you can get to from your transmitter. You toggle from ABM to 3D on your transmitter six times and this screen will pop up and through this screen it's your setup to allow you to change things so if your gyro is moving everything backwards or just the rudder backwards in this setup screen you can change that so it moves it correctly you can also set up uh, one of the switch modes you can pick a few different things you might want on one of your switches and you can tell it which way the main unit is pointing in case you have it pointed in some weird direction. You can change flight speed so when it returns to home you can tell it how fast to go. And I do use this unit to control my throttle setting. Um, there are a lot of different things you can config here. You can also do this through a computer but for me this was the easiest way to go and this is what I use at the field. So through this menu, I was able to get everything moving the right direction. And here's a little diagram of the way things should go. And once again, all of this is in the review. So refer back to that for your setup. So now it's time to take the plane to the field. You know, it's been windy and I could not find a good day. We've been out with it two or three times now and shot some videos. So let's go check that out. So the fin wing penguin was buttoned up and ready to go. We had 15 mile an hour winds, but we had the onboard gyro, so that was not a big deal. And it's time to take off. So you're seeing what I was seeing through the goggles. And while uh, I have to say it sounded kind of frightening to fly an airplane with goggles over my eyes, but the second that you're in the air and in the cockpit, it's a lot easier to actually fly FPV. And uh, it was also tons of fun. While uh, we did get kind of high at points in altitude, we really wanted, or I really wanted, to go down low and scorch the earth like I do in flight simulators. So let's look at the on-screen display. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of information there, and all of it's important. So let's talk about what the on-screen display is actually telling you. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, number one is your ALGO, and that is your GPS altitude. Below that is a little icon of a satellite dish, and this tells you how many satellites are being uh, received by your GPS unit. Right below that, number three, that is your airspeed, GPS speed. And then below that, we have all the battery information. So we have number four is your battery voltage. Five is battery power consumed. Six is is your distance to home point, very important. Seven is your power battery current. And this is one of the things I look at quite a bit. And then we're gonna move to eight, which is right next to that. That is uh, your flight mode. So you could be in a stabilized mode, return to home, circle, things like that. And then beside that, we have the current latitude and longitude of the plane, which could come in handy if you were to crash. 10 is your relative altitude. 11 is your GPS speed, and one thing that I did do a lot is if I was a return to home or a loiter, I was trying to verify that my throttle setting was right, so I would watch my speed to make sure it was staying kind of in the same place, and watch my altitude to make sure I wasn't going down, and uh, it's a nice warm feeling you get when you realize it's working just right, and then we're going to move to 12 is your flight total mileage, and 13 is your flight time, very important. All these things are important, I guess. 14, current course of flight. So um, this would help you know which way you're going, of course. And then 15 is the angle of turning to the home point. And then my favorite, I've got 16 to go over. 16 is your attitude table. 
And then 17 basically represents your plane. So if you don't know where you're at, you could point the arrow, uh, make sure it's pointed at the center, and start flying yourself home that way. And we did have a guy, uh, Everett, that was out with us that day who'd never flown FPV, and he said, I have to fly this thing. And I handed over the goggles and the transmitter, and at one point he... Uh, he at the very start he was flying away from us and thought he saw the runway and uh, so he got all situated with the on-screen display and got things going so right now you're looking at us flying in the abm mode which is a stabilized mode and it it's such a nice mode that i like to just leave it there and then what we're going to do next is we're going to switch over and go into a uh, circle loiter just to see if it works so ACM is auto circling mode and when you flip the switch to ACM the plane will maintain altitude and the flight speed and it will initiate a counterclockwise circle. The center of the circle is the point at which you flip the switch and it has a default radius of 80 meters. You can change that if you want. So this will come in handy if you just needed to uh, if you needed to do something, if you needed to not control the plane at that time, control a secondary camera or something like that. So once again, the plane is definitely flying on its own. I'm not touching the controls at this point. And then the next place we're going to go is with uh, the return to launch, return to home. I also have my failsafe set to go into this setting if I were to fly out of range or lose my transmitter signal somehow. And this was kind of a Interesting thing, you know, it's a, it's kind of normal now to have this on a quad, but it was exciting to have it on an airplane. And so here it is. It's cranking over and heading back. And we're just along for the ride. Once again, you know, we're not controlling the plane at this point. It's using the GPS and the FY41AP. To control itself. Why is it fading out? It's fading out because it's right over us now. So there are other settings that you can utilize on this. These are kind of the basics, I think, for what I need anyway. Um, you know, once again, fail safe. Be sure to set that on your transmitter. It's different for each transmitter receiver. You need to look that up. And what else do we have? Fixed altitude and heading lock mode. This mode maintains the aircraft flight course and holds the altitude on activation. So it auto corrects flight course deviation and maintains a straight flight. This would be more of a hands off way to fly. And then there's a 3D mode. This seems like just a little more of a, it was slightly different. It's a gyro, but if no input's given by the pilot, then in 3D mode, it will lock into the current aircraft altitude and of course we went over uh, auto circling and then finally there's waypoint navigation now this is not something that I uh, I did and that enables you to fly fully on autonomous with up to 20 waypoints with the FY ground station so that's a whole other deal right there but it's awesome and the fact this unit can do that I think is pretty impressive so these are many of the things that this unit can do. So I hope all this is a good overview. Just to, I know uh, sometimes technology like this is hard to wrap your mind around. And so the goal of this video is really just to explain how it works and show it in action. And for me, uh, my maiden flight, we did everything we needed to do. We got our shots. And then Jason said, land it. And I was like, you know, I just built it. I, I'd like to keep it a few more days before I break it into a thousand pieces. But uh, through his urging, I brought it around and I put that thing on the ground. And so, and once again, that was the maiden flight and the first time I'd ever flown FPV, you know, on an airplane. So it was that confidence inspiring that it allowed me to do that. And then we had another guy at the field the next day who showed up and he said, I've got to land this airplane too. And the great part is when I landed, I said I felt as giddy as a schoolgirl, which I did. And then when he landed, he just laughed and laughed. And he said he has to own one now. He has to have an FPV vehicle of some sort, a plane, I would assume. And, you know, that's kind of the thing. We're coming to the end of this review, but the uh, it actually 
brings joy <laughs> you know you have all this technology in this plane and you put the goggles on and now you're flying around like a bird so while it takes a little bit of skill and knowledge to get there once you get up there and everything's working I can't tell you how much fun it is and uh, what I will do is I'll drop in uh, Everett right after he landed using the goggles and the uh, Futech FY41AP. So I'm Jim Graham with RC Groups. I really hope that this has been informative. I'm sure it's been long, but I felt like this was the information you needed if you were new to this and you were just getting in to uh, fixed wing FPV. And we'll, before we go to the, the video of, of Everett, uh, we'll show you a landing here. This is actually Jason Cole on this one. So he's lining it up. A little bit of a crosswind. Maybe a lot of a crosswind. And we're on the ground. Too cool for school. Yeah, you're good. You're perfect. Oh my gosh! Another oh, first man. FPV landing. I am absolutely loving this. Oh my god. I... Here, take it. I can't have it. Oh, jeez. Well, that was... You talk about an experience. My goodness. So what was it like, Everett? I mean, uh... It was absolutely fabulous. I flew real ones 40 plus years ago. The approach, other than it being it doesn't feel like a, a Cessna 172. It's not as sensitive, so it has it's kind of mushy. mushy right. But it gives you time. It just it's fabulous. And you have the gyro on there too. We have a light gyro just for the wind and keep everything nice and stable. I just <laughs> And so tell everybody what you do out here all the time. The only thing you do is my master pattern. Right. And that's all you've ever done for that's as long as I've known. Done since 1989. Do you think you might uh, try to get a little uh, FPV going on something? have to.